Hi, good morning, and welcome back to the Kristen Amdahl Show. This is episode 1017, and we are here live in Southwest Florida at the beach. If you are joining me live, please say hello. Let me know if you're crafting today. Let me know if you have questions for me. Let's see if we can lighten this up. Oh, I can lighten this up. Let's see what happens if I do. No, I don't think that's gonna work. Anyway, I tried. I'm in the shade. I'm in the shade. Remember that spot that I wanted to show you guys a while back where it was under the trees but still at the beach and I thought it looked so sweet in there and I was hoping that it didn't have bugs? Well, it's really warm here today and I'm wearing a sweater <laughs> and so I thought it'd be better for me to be in the shade but obviously it's dark now so we'll see. Hi Thea, Angela, Grace and Judy. Good morning everybody. Welcome back to the Kristen Omdahl Show. Hi Judy, Lisa, Marsha. I am wearing a new pattern today, yay! And I'm so excited to show you the entire outfit and I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, let's see, I missed some names. Hi Joe and Judy, Mickey, Sunshine. Hi everybody, hi Lori, good morning. So allow me to introduce you to the Coraline Top. This is a brand new pattern you can find on my website. It's a top-down raglan shaped pullover. Works seamless in the round for the body, the yoke, the body, and the sleeves. The pattern uh, is available on my website now. The tutorial video will be out later today. It will be live premiered. I do not know what time, but if you are subscribed to my channel and signed up for notifications, you will be notified when it's live. Um, and I'll be in the chat, so if anybody has any questions, I'll be in the chat. Otherwise, uh, it'll be a video on YouTube for the rest of whatever. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm going to stand up in a minute. Hi, Shelly. Hi, Angela. It is so pretty. I love this top, and i, I got to show you how I styled it, too. So I found a new skirt on Amazon, <laughs> and I bought the skirt not thinking that I was going to wear it with this. Oh, we gotta go in the sun, don't we? Let's go up here instead of down to the beach, though. I'm gonna go stand in the sun for a minute so you can see all these beautiful colors. Okay, hopefully you can see this. Am I backing up enough? Now I can't see the screen. Anyway, so this is the Coraline top. I made it in Be So Baby Yarn Color Coral. And this skirt I got on Amazon, it has an elastic waist, high-low hem. What I love is that it has a different print for the hem than it does for the skirt. And how cute do they look together with the stretchy belt? Like, so cute, right? So I'm wearing a nude tank top underneath. So I wanted to show you all of that first. And then, as you can see here, it is raglan-shaped increases front and back. It's reversible. You could wear it front or back. It, there's no difference between the front and the back. And it's worked in the round. Raglan increases to where you separate for sleeves and body, then worked even in the round for the rest of the body. And then the sleeves are picked up and worked even in the round from the armhole openings. Super simple. One stitch pattern. The pattern comes with individual charts for each yoke size so no matter what size you're making there is a chart for your yoke which i think is really nice i think it's a nice feature that i offer in my patterns when uh this is crochet this is crochet so when i think that it's appropriate i think it's really fun to make separate charts for each size instead of saying um uh I think I put the skirt on right. I'm not sure what you mean by not wearing the skirt right. Um, I think you can wear it in multiple ways, actually, with a high-low hem. You could put that high side on the side so it's like a side slit, or I wore it in the front, but I don't think there's any wrong way to do it, necessarily. Uh, what was I saying, though? Hmm. Oh, so the pattern has separate charts for each yoke. Then there's a pattern for how to work the body in the round. And unfortunately, the sleeves ended up starting on a different round of the two round stitch pattern than the body. So I actually made a separate chart for the sleeves as well. Um, even though they're virtually identical, I know some people 
would uh, don't like taking that leap. Oh, that was a joke. Okay. Um, yes, it is the same stitch pattern that I used in the Nikki scarf. So if you liked this stitch pattern in the Nikki scarf, you'll like this stitch pattern. Obviously, it's worked differently now. In that particular scarf, it was worked even in pattern. And now this has worked not only even in the round, but also increase in the round. So it's two different ways, two additional ways to use that stitch pattern. Great question though. You know, and that's going to be a lot of what the next book is about, is taking a stitch pattern and using it in so many different ways. Like, for example, the Nikki stitch pattern will be in the new book and it's going to be shown, worked even in rows, worked even in the round, worked increase in rows and worked increase in rounds. So increase in the round, you do stuff like um, squares, rectangles, and you could, if you take the leap, you could do a raglan shaped uh, yoke. However, that is something that won't be, you know, you can't put everything about everything in a book, right? You have to, there are limits to what, uh, how much space you have. So I did not include, include how to do a raglan yoke in the book, but I did include how to do, for each stitch pattern that will be in the book, it'll show you how to work even in rows, even in rounds increase in rows and increase in rounds. Man, there's a lot of people here today. All right, any other questions? Great questions. The skirt is on Amazon, yes? Yeah, as it is just showing each stitch pattern four ways, which is mo more than most books do in the first place, it's still, uh, it's a big book. If I didn't put the skirt in my Amazon shop yet, uh, I will put it in later. I don't know if it's there or not. I meant to put it in there. I'm pretty sure it's in there. Because I also shared a link to the skirt. Um, I shared a link to the skirt uh, on the pattern page as well, because I figured a lot of people would want to know about the skirt, because it looks so cute with the sweater. All right, does anybody have any other questions? Are there any other questions about the top? If not, I've got other things to show you today as well. Uh, yes, the top would be pretty with no sleeves. I will point out where that would happen. So it's a raglan shaped pullover and that's a great question by the way. So on a raglan shaped pullover, you have the whole yoke going to here, right? The, the sleeves end where the, uh, where the armholes begin. So a sleeveless version would actually have cap sleeves. So you could, if you can imagine, the sleeve would end here. If you wanted something truly sleeveless, like a tank top, a raglan shaped yoke would not work for that. Raglan shaped yokes always give you like a cap sleeve version like this. But that's a great question. And yes, it would be super cute without the sleeves. Also, uh, keep in mind it's a top-down pullover, so you could make you could make this longer, and you could make the sleeves longer or shorter depending on your style and your aesthetic. But yes, it would be absolutely adorable in the sleeve without the sleeves added. I just know that I any time I. Most of the time when I make something without sleeves, I get asked how to add sleeves to it. So for me as a designer, it does, it is, it does benefit me to show things with sleeves, but it's funny. If I show it with sleeves, would it look good without sleeves? If I don't show it sleeves, how could I add sleeves? So yeah, yes, you could make it into a dress too, absolutely. I would definitely consider adding some sort of shaping because even though uh, whatever fits you in the top, you might need a little more shaping in the bottom just so that you have an ease for walking uh, or depending on what style you're looking for. So that would involve either some increases on the sides or doing some side vents or adjusting your gauge. So I did this top with a uh, G hook, four millimeter crochet hook. 
I would consider going up in hook size to a five millimeter and maybe even a six millimeter to get some ease if I was going past my hips to make it a dress. But yes, tunic, dress, absolutely, those are all great options, whether you add sleeves or not, or do any length of sleeves. Um, is this belt in my Amazon shop? I do not think so. This is a really old belt, <laughs> but I could find something similar to uh, put in there for sure. I'm wearing, uh, it's a stretchy belt. I like wearing stretchy belts when I wear them over tops like this, um, but any belt would work. So many great questions, guys. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> I can't even get people out of the camera today. That's a lot of people. It's packed here. It's absolutely packed. Ooh, they've got a cool tent set up. Isn't that cool? All right. Does anybody have any other questions? Thanks, Judy. Judy's posting a link to the skirt. Yeah, I have skinny stretchy belts in my shop now, which are fabulous, and I wear those all the time. I thought this one would look cute with a thicker one. That's why I styled it this way, but it would work with the skinny ones as well. And I'll look and find something similar to what I have in uh, thicker belts and add it in. So I brought back the Marissa shawl today because I wanted to show you a couple of things about it. First of all, I wanted to show you how similar and different it looks in other colors. So this one's done in three different colors. Oh, the lighting is terrible in here, isn't it? So this one was, is with blues and greens, and this one's with pinks and blues. And I also wanted to, since we talked about the earrings yesterday, which I could not find to bring to show you this morning, I wanted to point out that doing this motif much smaller is how I added it to earrings. And what I did was, you know, in the Kelly earrings where I took a hoop and stretched the crochet motif around the hoop? Well, on something like this, I stretched this side, the short side of the motif. That's what I stretched around the frame of the bottom of a crochet hoop earring. And you can find that if you go to the Adriana uh, knit earring pattern on my website. And if you have the book, 80 Handmade Gifts, you can find the photos in there too. Marsha's working on a fringe scarf, how fun. And then I thought it was just gonna be interesting to show you how pretty and different they look in the different colors. I don't have a solid color version of this, but this would be beautiful in a solid color too. Anybody have any questions? As soon as I get back to my office, I will finish setting up the Coraline Top tutorial video and you'll be able to watch that with me later today. Ooh, Catherine says it's negative 32. Oh, I think that might have been Celsius. So. Uh, for those of us with Fahrenheit, that's around zero, but still super duper cold. I hope you're inside and staying safe and warm. You know, since I have a tank top on, I could take the sweater off so I can show you some other things too. So here's the belt. This one has the stretch in the back, but I'll take the top off too so I can show you more things about it. Okay, so like I was saying, it's a top-down construction. So you start with the foundation ovals at the neck and then we work increases. Can you see the, the raglan shape increases? It's like a, I used kind of a shell to do this one and you can see the raglans there. And then you can also see then, this is where the sleeve would end. So if you were making this and you didn't want to add sleeves, this is where the yoke ends, okay? And if you wanted to make it longer, you could absolutely make it longer. I wanted this to be a little on the shorter side because I wanted to belt it at my waist and have it just a little longer than that. But if you like to wear things differently or style things differently, you could definitely make this longer. You would just need more yardage. The pattern comes in five sizes, uh, sizes 36 to 52, I believe. There's five sizes, four inch increments between sizes. And like we've talked about before, if you wanted something more modified than that, something between sizes, you could adjust your gauge for that. Uh, there's all sorts of ways to create other sizes beyond what a pattern shows. If anybody has questions about that, let me know. 
Sometimes that gets really technical and detailed, but if it's a simple question, I could try to answer it. And as you can see, it's identical on both sides. There is no like front or back, it's identical on both sides. So pretty. All right, any more questions? Oh, another thing I wanted to point out. Notice how I ended on the row that has the scallops. You could also do this, if you don't like the scallops, you could end on the row that has chain spaces. It's a chain three single, chain five single, and it actually gives you a straight edge. So if you wanted to do this without scallops, like we all have different style aesthetics, right? Some people may love the scalloped edge and some people may not. If you would want a straight edge, all you would need to do is end on the other round. It's only a two round repeat. So it's the round with the 11 double crochet shells alternating with a single crochet and then the other round is a chain three single chain five single and so if you ended on that round instead and then followed that up with a round of plain double crochet where you did three doubles in each chain three space and five doubles in each chain five space possibly a double in each single too it would depend on uh, you'd have to see if that made it too roughly or if it kept it straight but you could either you would I would try both of those ways and then you could get a straight edge along the bottom too you don't have to have the scallop if you don't want to which some people will love the scallop some people won't and so I think that's really great that you could do it in the two different ways I might have to show that in a video though because I'm guessing some people may not be able to visualize it without seeing it but I just wanted to let you know that you have those options as well I think it looks really nice and finished with the scallop but again different strokes for different folks right it doesn't matter that's the beauty of making things ourselves we have the ability to uh, customize things for ourselves too so yeah you could do it short sleeve long sleeve short top long top dress uh, scallop edges straight edges and different yarns you don't have to do it a number three uh, DK weight yarn you could do it in some a lazier lacier or is this hot pink no it's coral I'm wearing a size 40 the pattern comes in 36 40 44 48 and 52 inch bust circumferences and I make I wore I'm wearing the 40 oh it was negative 32 it's hard for me to read the screen I saw there I, I oh yeah that's right I went in the other direction okay all right thanks yeah we could if we all made a Coraline top they'd all be uniquely different and that's the beauty of handmade making something handmade we have the ability to adjust things for our needs, for our aesthetic, for our style, for our skill set. Uh, it's amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Judy. Yeah, I love this color. I love coral. And I especially love it with this skirt. We got, oh, I didn't show you my shoes either. Oh, my shoes are super cute today too. So I'm wearing the, I found these on Amazon also. They're by Katy Perry. They're Katy Perry's jelly sandals, and they're scented. And the pair that I got are scented like flowers. Like, is that not perfect? I think it's jasmine scented even. Like, geez, could they have hit that on the nose any better for me? So I'm coming out, out in the sun again because I wanted you to see the skirt details and my shoes. Let's see. Can I lift my foot up enough? Can you see? I can't see it. The problem is... You can see light in the sun and I can't see. So as you, hopefully you can see this. So the shoes are jelly flats, but they have an ankle strap. And the thing that goes between your toes is not like a normal flip flop. I can't, I can't do this without getting my legs up too. Okay, can you see that it's a star? I'm having a really hard time showing that. Can you see the star? Now, if you go to the shoe link on my Amazon shop, you'll see that they come in a ton of other prints too. Instead of a gold star, you could get a pineapple, a strawberry, um, all sorts of whimsical designs. 
but these, oh, I could take the shoe off and show you. That's what I can do. And they come in other colors, so many different things. But let me take one of them off. So the jelly shoe itself is clear with gold stars in it. Can you see that? And then it has the gold star for the thong. Is it called a thong or a thong? I can't remember. And then it has the ankle strap and they're surprisingly not uncomfortable. I wouldn't say that they're the most comfortable shoe. Like, let's be real here, you know, wearing slippers or socks or just plain flip flops are obviously a little easier to walk in, but these are not difficult considering what they are. So that's what I'll say about that. I have worn them, um, I have worn them on longer trips, like shopping and stuff, and they did not bother my feet. I have not gotten any blisters from them. So like in the realm of cute shoes, I would say that they're more comfortable than I expected. But, uh, you know, if you're someone that's sensitive to stuff like that, I would definitely probably consider, or definitely probably, yeah, nice. I would consider maybe putting a Band-Aid on your uh, feet before, well, when breaking them in. Because um, I know some people are certainly more sensitive than others. My mom and my sister are super sensitive uh, when they try new shoes, and so they need to break them in. But I also think they buy their shoes too small, but that's another story. Uh, I have not had any problems with blisters at all wearing them, and I've worn them several times. Uh, so I wanted to point those out too. <laughs> and I think they're adorable with this outfit. Does anybody have any other questions? I feel like there's been amazing questions today, guys. Love it. And I've been able to answer questions of things that I didn't think to add about what I'm wearing. So thank you so much. Um, how is my house hunting going? That's a great question, Donna. Uh, I, I was going to make an announcement on Saturday, but yeah, I'm not, I have found a solution. I'll put it that way, but it's not official yet. I think I have found a solution, but uh, you know, I'm a little on the superstitious side. So until it's official, like official, official, I don't want to say anything, but I'm in so if anybody wants to cross their fingers for me, that would be great or prayers or good wishes. However you like to do that. Uh, I still appreciate it. Uh, but in it, nothing's official yet Saturday. It should be official, but I will have an announcement on Saturday, hopefully. <laughs> um, Sarit wants to know, uh, if I design a project, do I start with a sketch or start crocheting? It depends. I start projects in all sorts of different ways. I do not limit myself to one particular uh, way of doing things. Sometimes I could be inspired by a texture I see in nature or a, a silhouette that I see in a TV show or movies or stuff like that. I Sometimes it's the yarn or the color or something like that. And sometimes it's the, uh, the actual stitch pattern that's the inspiration. So, and then it just depends from there. Uh, oftentimes when I do top-down construction, I don't need to do a swatch first because I figure out the, the gauge as I go. Um, do I sell products at markets and how do you price them? I do not sell uh, finished items. I do not, unless I'm doing a sample sale. And then when I do sample sales, they are far cheaper than the cost of the labor and the materials used. So that's not something that I would recommend as a revenue source, but we can definitely talk about pricing items to sell on another episode because that is a lengthy subject and it is something that's important to me because that's how I started my career was selling ready to wear. And so anybody wanting to enter that particular part of handmade of the handmade world um, I I do have a lot of advice and I have a lot of thoughts on it but I think that you know we're almost done with this episode so I'm gonna hold that for another one. Oh, Lisa just ordered one of the skirts I they're so cute I now that I have oh I'm wearing size large in the skirt too um, now that I have one I definitely want more I think they're so cute uh, and I didn't buy the skirt to wear with the top. I bought the skirt because I love the print and I love the two-piece 
uh, the two different prints together, I bought it to wear with a jean shirt, <laughs> to the jean shirt that I was going to tie. I'll show it to you another day. Um, but I, when I finished making the top, I was like, oh my gosh, I think they might go together. And I put it together. I'm like, holy smoke, they do go together. Uh, someone just asked if I uh, if have a new book coming out this year. I do. We are in the editing process, so it is going to be out sooner than later. Uh, so the newest pattern is the Coraline top. Next will be a crochet dress that I wore on the 1000th episode and I decided I'm not going to call it the Kristen because I don't think I'm ready to name something after myself, but I did. I am going to call it the Kiki uh, dress, K-E-K-E, -K -E, which was my nickname when I was very little. When I, uh, when my sister was born, when my sister was super young, she's a year younger than me, she couldn't say Kristen or Chrissy, because that's what I was actually called when I was younger. She used to say Kiki, so I thought, I'll call the dress Kiki. Uh, and that one will be the next pattern to come out. And then after that, I don't, um, I don't know what will be after that, but in, uh, in and around all of that, in new videos and new patterns that are coming, the book will be out probably in the next couple of months but I don't have a date yet because we're just starting on the, the editing process. And I will need some proofreaders, but I'm not ready to do a call to action for that yet, so I will let you know soon. But wonderful questions today, everybody. Just been amazing. Uh, we have time for another question if anyone has something. Sorry if I missed your question. It's hard to read all the comments sometimes. If your question's important to you and I didn't get to it or you want to leave me feedback of any kind, please always feel welcome to come back to the episode when it's no longer live and you can leave your comments and questions in the comments and I get notified from those throughout the day. And uh, I don't have a moving date right now, Melody. I do not have a moving date. I might have an official announcement on Saturday of what my plan is, but I don't have anything official to share yet. All right, I don't see any more questions, so let's look up a quote. Ooh, this is a nice one. Oh, so this is Create, Share, Inspire Notebook, Volume 1, Issue 3. Oh, by the way, I sold out of all of my books recently, and I have a bunch of more books on order, a bunch more books on order, and maybe not all of them. Almost all of them are sold out. Please make sure you go on the wait list so that you're first to know when they're back in stock. They are on the way. Okay, so this is page 18 of volume one issue three and this quote is from Rumi who I love Rumi quotes why should I be unhappy every parcel of my being is in full bloom <laughs> isn't that beautiful like oh my gosh I love that we need to try to that's a hard one to feel sometimes, right? Like when you don't feel that, it's hard, like, oh, could I really feel that? You know what? If you don't feel that, which I don't always feel this, read it every day, right? I think, we're, I think we can get to this place, even if we don't feel that way now. I think we can get to this place by reminding ourselves all the time. Anytime you can gently remind yourself of positivity and optimism, it helps. Every little bit helps. So let's read it again. Thank you to Rumi for sharing this beautiful quote. Why should I be unhappy? Every parcel of my being is in full bloom. Yes, it is. Every parcel of my being is in full bloom and every parcel of your being is in full bloom. We don't need to be unhappy. Every parcel of our beings is in full bloom. Oh, I love that. Even if I don't feel it, saying it more often than not will help me get there and you too. Thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed the beach, my show and tell, chatting with me and everyone else. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a wonderful day, everybody. I'll see you later on today for the live premiere of the Coraline Top video tutorial, and I'll see you tomorrow for the next episode of the Kristen Omdahl Show. Bye-bye. Oh, look it, we've got a little bird friend. Look it, he just walked by. I don't even know what he is. Is that the I'll sandpiper? I can't remember.
so cutie. Okay, bye.